Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Intel Extreme Masters Oakland. We're going to be going into map seven in just a moment here as we have six games done and dusted. And welcome back to the next Xfinity Analysis desk here, joined by Avenger and Steel once again. It's been a good tournament so far, guys, with a lot of good finishes. No repeat finishes in terms of first places just yet. That being said, that means that the points right now are very distributed and still all to play for here in the seventh and eighth game. Still anybody could win it, Steel. Yeah, anybody can win it, and there's a, a few favorites, definitely. Triple A doing really well, but you can't really count any team out. This is when I think crazy stuff could happen. Maybe. We might see really aggressive styles from a lot of teams. We might see, like, people contesting in the initial drop zones a lot more now coming into these final games just to be able to take out a team that might be a threat. Yeah, it's a really good point. I mean, if you are down towards like 15th through 20th place, you're effectively around 500 or 600 points behind some of the front runners. So you've got to do something wild as we can look at the standings now. At the moment, AAA in first place with 1,360 points, and it goes down from there. So far, so good for a lot of the big names here in PUBG Avenger. Temple Storm third without any wins. I think they're the most consistent team yes. in this. I think they have five out of six games, top five. Actually, yeah, super consistent phase fourth without the win. If they get a win, they're going to be in a good standing, of course. Yeah, absolutely. And, and they're looking for it. They definitely are. Uh, they have the chops. They have the potential to do so as well. Meanwhile, looking at the bottom of the standings here, these are the teams that want to really pull out some wild and crazy accomplishments in the next two games steal. They've got to effectively change and shift a lot of their mindset as to how they're going to approach things if they want to really get high. Yeah, and one of the things I noticed about these bottom five teams is they're not really teams that are going for kills ever. They're they're always trying to play really passively, they're trying to play for the late game, and they always die in the rotations, and they're never in a favorable engagement. And like I said before the show, take those engagements where you control the outcome. Like, you don't want to be fighting just because you're pinched by two teams. You don't want to be fighting because, you know, you let someone else in your compound. You want to be fighting because you have that opportunity to take a team out of the game or to get points, and you want to be able to just say, oh, you know what, we don't... You know, this isn't working for us. Let's get out of here. Yeah, very, very true. What do you think in terms of you think we were going to go to just normal drops again? I, think, I keep asking you this from game to game, hoping that there's going to be a little bit more variety, a little bit more spice, but what do you think? I think there's going to be still these seven, eight teams doing the plane dependent drops. Mm -hmm. And I, I mean, we've seen Penta changing up from yesterday. They played very passively. They got four kills in four games yesterday. Yes. Last game, they got 14 kills in just <laughs> one game. That's I mean, they've, they've been swapping stuff off, and they really want to improve. They finished 20th to yesterday, and now they're at 11th, mm. and in front of uh, Cloud9 that actually won a game yesterday. So uh, I think they're looking into getting to the money. Well, similar to how these players are going to have to rotate around the map, we've rotated out our casters as well. So let's head over to our new lovely pair in dashing pink and purple as we get into our next game. Yes, thank you very much. Completely uh, unintentional color coordination going on today. Mm -hmm. But uh, Matt, we are coming into the crunch time. Seven, oh, yes. Game seven and eight. We've seen no repeat winners, as they just said. This is the time for someone to step it up, someone to be that repeat winner. Tempo Storm, they haven't even won, but they are just continuing to creep along in second, third place. They're doing such a good job on just repeatedly being in that top two to five and securing a lot of kills out of it. So all around, they're performing very, very well, and the standings are reflecting that. But they haven't gotten that win yet, and I could see that this could potentially be their chance. I mean, you saw everybody do their homework last night. They come in, everybody's here to play. Play. Now you have to bring out those last couple of tricks that you've got in your playbook. There's only two games left. You have to make each one of them count. And obviously, we have been talking about the winner, who's going to take the ultimate prize, the $60,000. But we should say the money goes all the way down to eighth place. And look mm -hmm. at Penta, as they say, from 20th up to 11th place already. Incredible stuff. Here we go. The plane is coming in. Where's the cut going to be? It's going to be straight across Kameshki, right down to Primorsk. It opens up the map to just about every drop they want. The question is, are they going to mix it up? Are they going to go for the ultimate drops? Do they want their standard favorable positions? Georgie Paul North is a long way off for TSM. 
If you're going to go for Georgia Pool in this game, you're going to have to land quickly and secure some type of vehicle and mobilize over to Georgia Pool as fast as you can. A lot of these teams are going to have to redirect and try to figure out, okay, we don't get our comfort picks now. We have to figure out somewhere else that we want to go. And you can see that everybody's kind of pushing towards that western coastline as fast as they can. But there are a couple of teams that are opting into staying on this eastern push. And with a plane path like that, that's pretty risky because you can end up with a lot of teams all compacted right on top of each other. I think I see Digital K is going for Milton Power along with FaZe. I'm sure I did. Because he Cloud9, they went up north. They've decided, you know what? Kameshki, Starba, all that sort of area, that's going to be ours. Nobody else is going to contest them. I don't think they were first out of the plane and going to be the first guys there. I did see some very interesting drops across the board. You'll see Frolica about to find himself his first bit of loot as he tries to uh, see anything to match his stylish hairstyle. I'm not too sure. It's going to be a helmet. There you go. It's, you kind of, you kind of curb the hair. What's the purpose of having cool hair if you immediately throw on the helmet for it? <laughs> but with this, you can see that this is the standard beginning game. Everybody's just trying to separate out a little bit, trying to get whatever loot that they can. Specifically around the Milta area, you want to try to secure as many, as many of these buildings as you possibly can because the loot's kind of spread across multiple roads. So you have to push across one section to get to another section and you want to get the ones around the roads first because then there's less risk of somebody coming across you. And specifically if you see the air, uh, whenever you're dropping down and you see the parachutes and there's no one around you. Well, it does look like TSM secured a vehicle. I'm guessing they're heading over towards North George. We haven't seen the circle come in just yet. Uh, Shadow of course, we saw it from AAA. They're down in Milter Standard. I think it's sort of just picking up an eight times scope as well in the top of that uh, little military tower. And there oh. is the circle. Okay, we're going back over Gatka Way into Prom Pachinki as well. You can see it looks like Cornshook is headed down to Primorsk. I'm looking for TSM. They are heading towards North Georgia Pole. It looks like um, Digital Chaos actually have transferred. So Digital Chaos and Crimson are both in the Povka together. So almost certainly some action area there. But match them anything you're seeing? Look at this. We actually have Cloud9 that's up around Kamehameha. Meshki and Stalber area. They went for an opt up there and trying to get a little bit of loot. That can kind of be a little hit or miss. So we'll have to see if that comes back and bites them later on. But they are holding down the entire north uh, eastern corner of that map up there. But what I love about this is we saw a plane that came down predominantly on the east side and a circle on the west side. That means a lot of these teams are going to have to mobilize over. We're still seeing people that are trying to push over towards the western side to even get loot. Cornshookers were a team that certainly performed very well yesterday. I think they secured themselves a sixth place overnight, but they haven't had a great start in the first two games. So we're going to see whether they can get themselves back in the running. You're seeing Zampa here as he heads off. They're all around a ferry pier area at the moment. You can see down in Primor, so securing all the south side of the map, which obviously is in the circle to begin with. Um, I wonder if we're going to get a quarry finish. We haven't had a quarry finish. That would be an interesting one. A lot of elevation, etc., around that area. Well, one of the big things to remember with just these two games remaining is there's only about 300 points between what first and all the way down into eighth place. Yeah. So really, it's still everybody can come in and they have a chance here. So you can see that everybody's kind of playing into a little bit more passive play to start this off because they're aware of how tight this leaderboard is. Nobody wants to be that first team to go out. So everybody's playing for a little bit more for the survivor role. Really would like to see some of these teams get a little bit more aggressive and start trying to force some of these people into different uh, drop paths. I'm seeing wind and rain very much split as well. They're in and around uh, the, the ruins area. And then the little complex is just south of uh, uh, Rozok and uh, outside the school area, NIP in school, Alliance in Rozok. It's all very congregated at the moment. Nobody still challenging method. They're like, you guys can have Pachinki. <laughs> we we don't want to don't mess with your territory. And you're kind of seeing that to some very degree. Like, we've repeatedly seen some teams drop down over towards Slofsnoka Island, trying to get over towards Novo or military base proper. We haven't seen a lot of contestant inside of that zone's uh, Milta itself. I mean, we've repeatedly seen school and the apartments next to it just kind of get given over to whoever just makes the confidence drop for them. So with this, we're going to actually have to see a lot of these teams that are on this far eastern side start to make their push here relatively soon. I mean, we've got Against All Authority that's out there, FaZe that's out there, Ghost Gaming is down on Slofnovka Island, Evil Geniuses is on the island right now. Everybody's going to have to start making that move here relatively soon as we have about two minutes. You've got to go secure those vehicles and make your path over. Well, this crate is dropping straight on top of Noble, so they're going to be happy for that down in South Georgia Pot. Looking towards the uh, the back six at the moment. Oh, sorry, the front six. I'll tell a light. It's going to drop right on top of the tower by the looks of it. Um, so I guess we're going to see if we're going to get any any prizes in there. Is it going to just be a car nine shade of sadness? I don't know. Let's talk about Tempo Storm, though. Maluki uh, here. He's got Scoob in his sight. Scoob. Ooh, ooh. Oh, JP2 gets the knock. Could see the first man down here. And SKS out of nowhere. He was taking shots onto Scoob there. 
And so remember, this is Tempo Storm, who's been repeatedly performing well. Maluk is one of their strong gunners, though, so for him to go down this early is really, really rough for Tempo Storm. That means that, look, that, there's nobody around him to come iron, over and get the res. That was an iron sight SKS from that range. Holy moly. Hey, we talked about I mean, that these guys are the best of the really best. Like. <laughs> and they are nailing these shots. That was just one shot hit. There we oh, go. Scoop, scoop. No, instantly no, goes down. Scoop. He comes over here trying to get some loot and gets told, no, you can't come over here. But Valiant's actually trying to go over and get this res up onto Maluk. Comes around the backside, and he should be able to secure this res. Yeah, so Maluk's going to get back up. Uh, so actually, I mean, let's talk about Tempo Storm, because Tempo Storm have been creeping under the radar, yet they are still, I believe, in third place because mm -hmm. they're just constantly, but they are dropping this Gatka sporadic spread, and it, it seems to be very successful for them. They're not getting heavily involved in the crazy action, mm -hmm. but they're just keeping themselves to themselves. Even in this, whenever they couldn't make the long drop off to the far western side, they went for that quote-unquote trash loot strategy where everybody separates out and tries to get what buildings they can. And in this case, you can see the danger of it whenever Maluk went down. It tends to be very, very risky. Luckily, Valiate managed to get back over here, and we saw that aggression come on to uh, LG the moment they pushed in. Well, everybody's going to have to get moving in just a few moments. You can see the blue zone, 25 seconds. Everybody going really looking. Okay, you're looking at the circle. You're looking at the area. Where are you feeling like a favorable position? Because obviously we're looking obviously towards Ganka, Chopsticks, extra with Pachinki in there. That's kind of like central area at the moment where obviously LG Method, uh, we're seeing them all clumped together at the moment. Now we're seeing Penta. Penta is starting to come across. There's Ultra and Frost just there. They've collected the vehicles. These guys have, have looted out the farm area, etc. all the scattered buildings around there. It's something they've kind of done every game really so far when they've been able to. They're a team on the up and up as well, so they're a team mm -hmm. looking for kills. Are they going to be looking like, right, we're going to try and actually storm a compound? This is Penta after all. This they is true. They do that very well. They've been doing a very good job. They've made a big comeback today. We saw that they were towards the bottom of the leaderboards, and they fought them their way up to about 11th place now, I believe. So it's really good to see them. They did, a, like I said, we talked about it beforehand. They did their homework. They're coming in, and they're playing with aggression. They're trying to make sure that they get every single kill that they can. And you can see that they're coming in very centrally located inside this. They want to get a hold of these buildings. Did they want to make sure they get some level of control over the map. Did he just get out the car too early? I think I, think I just saw him knock himself. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> I'm pretty sure one of the Penta guys did that. X hanging out the window with Borg driving. He's got sweater ahead of him. Crunch must be in around there somewhere as everybody moves in towards these compounds and it is going to be all collected into these places you can see the points of course the spread just 345 points between first and fifth currently of course it's all about getting that big number one spot and triple a who have started strong yesterday have continued got themselves their first chicken dinner today jp2 still has yet to get himself any form of sight and we talked about how good these guys are with aim sure it's nice to have the, iron sight. the whole time yeah. i think he's moved he's just been kind of stuck there right now so he hasn't had a chance to get a lot of really solid loot and therefore, whenever we move into this range game that's going to happen in circles two and three, he's going to be in a little bit of a disadvantage having to go against people with potentially four X's or even somebody just with a red dot. I mean, it is, I guess, uh, uh, part of the fact that you are going for this trash loot strategy. The fact that the circles fell on you, everybody's coming into you, so it's not really that safe to go hunting around the houses, solo as it were. You can see Ninja with the uh, red dot scar trying to take some pot shots there. The vehicles come in their way. That's a team that needs to get some points on the board. I think they're sitting down in about 16th place. Luminosity Gaming, they've not had a very successful tournament. Every time they seem to go somewhere, they run into trouble. At the moment, though, they're holding their own compound. Well, we do see a little bit of fire coming back from their way. We've got Ghost Gaming that's finally decided, hey, it's time to get off the island. They're coming through. But right behind them is actually Evil Geniuses. They actually hopped out of their vehicles and were looking like they were going to take some shots at the fine legit. But he's on that motorcycle. He's like, nope, I'm out of here. Well, two teams that still yet to move is FaZe and AAA. They were both down milt away, but there we see X coming through, getting the knock on pretty much everyone from Crimson. And it is just Texas last man standing. He's going to get taken down by Crunch. And there goes NIP wiping out the first squad. It's Crimson Esports that go down first. That is catastrophic for Crimson Esports. They were really wanting to try to get some points inside of this round. Going down that early is so rough. But they were fighting for one of the major strong points inside of this map. We talked about them yesterday. These little buildings right here are so strong. You can play around all the little hills, step up, take some shots, maneuver around the outside of it. And LG is actually starting to do a push off to the side. And here we go. These are our guys tripping. 
AAA, trying to make their way through. Motorcycle squad, you know, just kind of rolling through, making the biker life happen. <laughs> Straight into the hay bale. Not so smooth their ship, but, you know, we caught it on screen. It's all good. So they're making their way through. And obviously the problem is that they are a little late to the party. The complexes are kind of all taken now. They are just working their way in. They're coming through the uh, the lower section underneath south of Farm. And are they going to get... Okay, they're switching up. They must have screwed one of the vehicles up. They're switching into a two... Uh, one, no, no, it's okay. They're going to go two on the trike. Risky, well, risky strategy. <laughs> look at this. We talked about beforehand about how important it is to be centered. Look at all of these teams and how condensed they are around that central area. And so all these teams that are trying to come in now are starting to get under fire and having to move out, move a little bit further away. Like right now you can see the LG's taking some shots over towards the DC guys and they're having to move back out. Well, FaZe, a team that did very well, second place in the last matchup. Just a little unfortunate, forced to almost push out of that warehouse. And obviously we saw Rock says holding the door, as it were. Well, they're making the direct approach up near Pachinki. It looks like they're going to opt into potentially going towards the Pachinki area. Or if they pull back down, they're going to end up running into about two or three squads on their approach. So this is where that decision-making comes into play. We talk about, sure, there, there are some random elements to PUBG, but really decision-making is a big factor in this. Something that you decide in circle two or three can come back and bite you in circles four and five. Everybody going central. EG coming in. They've been on the island. They're coming heading in towards Penta. We can see, obviously, on your screen, Triple Eight. They are coming in a little late, as we mentioned. Penta have got this complex already taken. It looks like they are taking shots. Pandigo, uh, Pan Panigo, we've been talking about him. How he's basically running into teams over and over yeah. and over again. It seems to be like a theme of the uh, tournament so far. But he has gone out early. You can say they've se secured themselves a hell of a lot of UAZs. They have been on military base for pretty much the entire time. They've had the freedom of that throughout the tournament. Nobody really testing them there. Well, you can see that Pinta is saying, no, we don't like your positioning, throwing out some bullets, forcing them to reposition and actually separate out in two different angles. So you can see the ghouls over here trying to push off to the side. He's got the UAZ, but now they're being forced to push a little bit further back, trying to move back towards the Gatka area, maybe going over towards Chopsticks. We're not seeing a lot of that area being too terribly populated right now. Yeah, next circle's come in. It has forced a lot of the teams to start migrating. They are all on the eastern side of the circle. They are starting to push to the middle. Middle currently is Gatka. That is where everyone's going. You can see the chopsticks just ahead. It looks like Cloud9 heading straight towards them. Well, they're going to go maybe around. It is a lot of real estate, and it is all free and over oh. the grab. So we're going to see everybody piling in towards Santa Nice Gaga. shot coming out there, and taking it on Frex. He's on, on the bike. I mean, that's a 125, full speed. Good knock, takes him out, finishes. And this is something we, we should talk about. Securing kills is becoming so prevalent right now with 10 points a kill, uh, kill. You have to make sure you get those last couple of kills on it because everybody is hunting those points right now. That was a really risky choice coming out from Cloud9. Driving through the field areas around Gatka, you have to assume that people are there. And he didn't even have a helmet. We don't know if it was shot off earlier, but that is absolutely risky choice to make there. And you can see he gets he definitely gets punished for it. I'm pretty sure it's not by choice. <laughs> That's for sure. Faye's got the themselves in a tricky situation as well. They kind of stuck between uh, wind and rain, it seems, off to the side. And I was looking at oh. the stats early on. Trifelli is one of the highest damage scorers in the game so far. He just hasn't really been getting the kills and securing them. I want to point out a thing right now. We actually do have TSM making their way into the safe circle already, so they're not in outside playing the outfit. But we're coming back over here with Wind and Rain, who's managed to get a knockdown onto Mexi. That's going to be really, really influential. He is one of their main players on there, and he gets taken down. So it was Method that knocked him, yet it's Stab that gets the kill. That's uh, a little harsh for both angles Whoa. as Crunch gets a flying vehicle. Oh, that's another member of FaZe. That's first FaZe down. And FaZe, who got second place in the last game, needed another decent round. But they are getting picked on the translations here as they try and move in. I'm looking towards Noble, who were in uh, North Georgia as well. Uh, sorry, South Georgia Ball. They've actually opted to go into Everest. So they're all up on high in the distance there as the rest of FaZe, which is the two members left. Of course, it is Yemti here on the side as we go a uh, little through the ground. <laughs> uh, Trying actually going to go straight into Noble, so they've got to be careful. Oh, I always love it when you see that burning wreckage just rolling back down the hill. It's like, you <laughs> just know you accomplished something good there. Wind and Rain are another one of those teams that are really trying to fight for some level of positioning inside of here. So that's a really nice positioning of their vehicles as well. They put them right between those two different ones, and that is an amazing crate. We've got oh, an AWM, play. plenty of ammo to play with, an 8x scope for you, and one for your friend. And a med kit, full, full med kit, and triple eight. 
Well, they're going for it, Shadows then. Thank you very much. He's already got oh. a time eight. He's only got a shotgun in his hand right now, so he's going to be loving, loving that AWM in there as Shiv. He's probably thinking, oh, I've got a car 98. I was thinking pretty good, but, well, we'll see whether he decides to transfer it. But they were getting pressured. Penta were taking shots of them, so were EG, but it seems they're pretty safe now on that crate. Cloud9 up to the north of them. But Triple A, this is something we've seen, actually. Obviously, we, uh, Steel was talking about on the desk earlier on, how they're a team that don't tend to opt for the complexes. Something they did do a lot in the mm -hmm. online qualifiers, but they have chosen to really stick on the outside and use that bush cover effectively or the hill cover. You're starting to see a lot of the stronger aim teams really prefer to play inside of terrain, so that way they can aim out and have full, hundred, th full 360 degree Ooh, angles, so that way they can take some with, shots. Oh, and that's a, such a weak shot. That's, that's, that's disappointing, but now he's giving his position away. He's kind of pinned behind this rock. Uh, Miami Flamingo is a team that would love to get a couple of kills here. And well, Triple A are completely exposed to him outside of that single tree. But they have all decided, you know what? Okay, time to move. The rest of Miami Flamingos try and light them up as they go for this move in towards the north uh, side or south side, I should say, of Gatka. Well, closer to uh, East Pajinki, West Pajinki. Well, we're going to see that actually Shadow managed to push forward from that crate secure building. The rest of AAA are potentially coming up behind them. I'm kind of curious to see at this point who Shadow decides to bequeath the other 8x2. It's like, uh, I would probably say it's going to go over towards Shiv. We know the fact that he does manage to get a lot of kills across events that he plays in. Chappie has actually opted into playing inside Chopsticks itself. It's fairly strong at different times. Being in it this early in the game can be a little bit of an awkward situation for you to be in. You can see that he's often looking back down towards the, the connector point between the two of them. Sure, you can step out and fire in, but there's so many different angles you can have somebody shoot back at you Yeah, on. I think it's because they were they're actually engaged bomb by NIP as they were trying to make that move. I think they were looking to get to the complex that NIP are in, and then kind of force it's like, okay, we need to divert, and Chop6 is really the closest we can find. We can see AAA, they've made their moves. They do have EG nearby. They're uh, fairly far in the distance. It's actually just Watts. Watts on his own. The rest of the EG are far off to the west side with uh, Pandego and Nomi. But uh, Watts kind of solo at the moment. He's got to be careful that he doesn't expose too much of himself to AAA because they'll certainly take shots. We know they have the scopes. TSM, let's talk about them because they're still outside the zone. Helping North Georgia Paul as they continue to run this uh, wide angle. And they're going a long way around actually as well. One big thing to note in this edition, naturally TSM is going to do the long push back around. But with a Gatka circle, you can see with the map being brought up now, Noble has actually managed to secure Everest. So they have full sight lines on most of these squads right now. And you can see that they're doing a lot of harass damage back down to Ronan right now, really forcing them to stay inside these buildings. So we're going to have to see how big of an influence having that high ground and those amazing sight lines that this provides. Where is the circle going to send us? Is it going to be a nice circle and kind of drop in on everybody else? Oh, eh, yes. It's nice enough, but all these guys that are being forced into playing edge now are going to not have that option anymore. They're going to have to circle around the outside and try to find some type of path. Most of these squads on the eastern side are not going to push directly in. They know it's too hot, so they're going to have to take long approaches around. Still nobody actually in Gatka, which I feel is about to change. Liquid were hovering on the west coast, and they're starting to make their way in. It looks like they're going to be going straight into the corn shuckers, though. We're seeing AAA here. They're trying to bully the way through and force uh, EG out of their area. As we continue, and that is Liquid moving in. Liquid getting a couple of knocks. You can see corn shuckers are taking shots on them. Hayes getting taken down by the corn shuckers while Shadow continues to try and scope. There's Ninja. Hop on high in a wizard tower, trying to see if he can land the shots as well. But nobody coming his way as everybody starts to make the rotations. You can see, uh, if we get the map up just in a moment, you can see they're all piling past Drassel's vision. Everybody is trying to make that move into Gakko. It is a kill zone, a hot box, and everybody is getting wrecked. And right as soon as you think that you make it through the safe spot, you're just going to run into another squad off in the distance. You can see there is no safety for all of these squads coming in. They're just collapsing into already claimed building complexes, and that just means there's going to be another fight to directly follow this one. Look at all those people right now that are knocked down and laying across the field. Zamti going down. That's Tempo Storm. Signs so that land some shots onto VZ. So Alliance were trying to come in, but they're coming into occupied territory phase. Remember, that only two members of those allies. He secures the kill on VZ. So while it was Tempo Storm that got the knock, it's FaZe that are securing the kills. There's another one for him as Alliance lose another member to Odin. And that's GMT finds Sigzi. Alliance down to one man. It's just Rom alone that is getting picked off. They're stuck behind those hay bales. They really didn't have any cover. It was just open season for Hackset. 
Haxede is just absolutely loving this. Everybody is just trying to cower back behind those hay bales. He's just doing shot after shot. He's even in like this really sneaky position, just leaning outside of one of the buildings, going right between these little boards and just nailing them from complete safety. It's Ronan that finally went to Gakka. Nobody actually occupying Gakka itself, which is... Uh, Interesting for me. It is something that a lot of people do tend to avoid. I'm seeing corn shockers nice here. Shots I was about to say, out. Miami Flamingos have moved right in on him. Da Coco returns the favor, knocks him down, but he's going to get himself revved straight back up. But they are in buildings right next to each other. Corn shockers, there's only two members in here. The rest of them, Elusive and Envy, are actually in another complex a little further away. So, kind of on their own at the moment. You just saw a little glimpse of Noble up on Everest there, tracking pot shots. Elusive once again, trying to land what he can, going for the. Uh, prediction shots effectively through the window. At this point, he's just trying to provide some level of cover fire so that way the reses can come back off. You can see Zampa's back up and alive, has managed to get the health off. Now we're going to see how they're going to have to play around this because naturally Cornchuckers has Paradox and Zampa in one building with a full four-man squad next to them. Off in the distance, sure, they do have two other members that can provide some level of cover, but how are they going to play this? Do they choose to go aggressive? Do they go for those points? Or do they try to go for survival points and try to back out of this? Well, Digital Chaos, the team that won the first round, they're sitting pretty comfortable at the moment, you can see, but this Ooh. little battle once again as Paranox gets knocked, it's going to be back and forward. Not really going to be able to secure the kill unless someone decides, okay, let's finally try and storm this. The circle really, I don't think it's going to switch this too much because they are both very central, so this compound absolutely has to be fought for. Ronan, we see getting Ron, that's the final member of Alliance going down there as Kraken gets the kill. He's in Gatka, so that didn't work out for Alliance. They've gone down fairly early in this one is still 62 alive. So we do see another res coming out. That means that both members from Corn Shuckers have been down. This becomes very, very influential. We talk about the if there's a big part of this that's going to be like, how many meds do you have to burn off? How much armor do you end up losing? Gypsy's going for a couple of shots there, but the more that you see these little attrition fights happen, then where just bullets are being wasted, you're seeing more damage coming out. Ooh. We're seeing two downs that have come out now for Corn Shuckers. If this starts to accumulate too much, it's just going to be something that Corn Shuckers can't overcome. There's a big cross fight going on while these guys are trying to take shots on each other. Oh, look at Shiv, he's hopped himself up on the top of the roof. Big cross fight going on between Noble, who were on Everest, uh, Wind and Rain, FaZe, and Digital Chaos. But now, looking at the circle, the new circle has come in. Everybody's going to make the move. There's Interrogate up in uh, Everest. He has to make the move down, because look at the new circle. It's coming. Gak is still there. Liquid are going to occupy a uh, decent area. Looks like EG is still safe. We can see Corn Shuckers are still safe. Ronan actually inside. Gak is safe. Digital Chaos making the move right now. Nobody seems taking shots on wind and rain that's good stuff down wookie's bookies down stab the last man standing for them and they're just going to secure the kill to the light trifelli's off the side see the stab is just being forced to cower back behind that rock right now it's important to note that noble still has to push down inside of this that's how come they're playing this so aggressive they are not in the safe zone so they're going to have to move back down in that direction triple a the leading team just lost a member they're trying to make the moves at the moment and it's actually miami flamingos that down them as they try and get through in towards the guy it looks like they're going straight for gaka now remember ronin were already in gaka so they're going to try and rush in there and see if they can try and storm it away from them looks like ghost gaming also just off to north of gaka does look like Oroxase has already got himself at top complex. You can see it's the three-story, so he's in a decent position here. And Ronan, they've not really been on the ball as they've let against all authority in the back door. Well, you can tell that Ronan was looking closer towards where the center of the map would be and try to catch anybody that was in the migration phase, whereas AAA just rolled straight up behind them and was like, nope, this is our building. We want to have it. Now that we've got some, a little bit of a bad neighborhood there, everybody's going to have to peek back and forth. You see a lot of long-range shots coming back as, uh, across the mini-map right now. Cornshuckers still under fire from multiple different angles. Yeah, I can see. You can see AAA. They've managed to occupy this building. Cornshuckers, I need to say, they've got uh, Evil Geniuses and uh, Digital Chaos, it seems, both pushing their position. Cloud9 out side of the circle at the moment. Remember, they were in chopsticks, so they've kind of made their move uh, towards the south side of the circle. Uh, NIP are on the move as well. Luminosity also having to move along with Method. Luminosity actually moving in towards Method as everybody jumps into vehicles. Penta also starting to work their way in. This circle's going to get messy because there's not a great deal of cover. Everyone's going to have to use these vehicles because there's a lot of open fields in these final circles. It's, a, it's, a, it's such a small circle at this point, and 55 people up alive. The circle's forcing everybody to go towards the 
fields locations. There are shots coming out from so many different angles. You can see Luke's just trying to drive through. He doesn't have a helmet and is in a buggy that's just wide out in the open. So he's just trying to gun through as fast as he can. And wow, look at all these people stacked up in this complex. Penta trying to pile straight in there. You can see they're trying to force uh, Miami Flamingos out of this as they get themselves tucked into a building, but it's not safe. It's not safe for us. It's Miami Flamingos territory, and they are holding it very strong. You can see Andy Pyro now from Method. He's going to collect a couple of kills as well. So he manages to get them shots in there and well. Method, a team that did very well yesterday, still haven't had a big finish today. Is this their time? Look at this. You can but see four squads in that one complex. Corn Chuckers right now is like, what is just happening? They were caught in that fight with Miami Flamingos for so long, and all of a sudden Method just rolls up and takes care of the problem for them. Elusive finally getting that down. A little bit of vengeance back. Energetic Turtle, you can see. Just trying to peek, peek through the cracks. Can he get anything in there? It doesn't look like it. Triple A were landing a couple of shots. See, Crown 9 also going down. That was Gak away. And the next circle is coming. Let's quickly get that on your map. You can see it's forced it right into the open oh. fields. There is not really a complex. Kornchuk is the only man really in there. You can see he's already taking fire. Everybody in Gakka, everybody in this crazy four-man pile where Energetic Turtle is, everybody has to leave this complex in one minute. And right now, it's just Noble who made their trek down from Everest. They've managed to secure some spot inside the circle. Digital Chaos is also in there as well. Liquid's just right on the edge of it. But these squads right now have a minute to disengage, get the kills, and get away. I think Noble are in prime position. That's, that's the radar tower, isn't it? I believe they are at the radar tower. They do have line of sight back down across all the Haybell locations. Digital Chaos is actually firing in onto Ronin on the backside of this. So finally, we see the step around. The Energetic Turtle does get the down onto that. He knows there's one around the side, and there it is. It's Cloud9. Uh, sorry, uh, Corn Shookers even. Zampa on the flank. You have to give it to Corn Shookers at this point. They have stayed alive you inside know, of the spot for so long. The irony is they can go and click themselves 30 points there because despite the fact Method downed them, they can go and finish off and get all the kills, and suddenly Corn Shookers can click themselves a whole load more kills. Noble, that's the team I want to talk about right now. I feel they're in the prime position in this circle. You can see uh, Ghost Gaming trying to push on them. They're stuck in the fields, but they have this prime territory. It is the little radar territory. They have perfect death lane. All around them to take shots. This is prime territory. Now the question is, anyone is going to try and push them with vehicles? Because that's the only way they're going to be able to force them away. Oh, Zampa's trying to push back out and around. He's gotten dipped very low on health. Remember, he has been knocked so many times. Miami Flamingos, Tony is also doing a push out. Circle has started to push in. These guys have to separate out. Andy Pyro is saying, no, get away from me. And there we go. We see a knockdown coming on from Zampa from behind. Well, they have to move. The circle's on them. You can see it's about to push right on the back through. Now they're inside the circle. Remember, this is like the, what, fifth circle, I believe. It's going to really chunk them down. Everybody's in the vehicles. Luminosity are piling in there. They're going to go straight in towards Liquid. I can see Hollywood in there. EG, they're pushing up on towards Noble. Digital Chaos, they're trying to force in. There's one complex in this circle, and there's about five squads trying to get in there. Monkey B in one of them, all just ahead of them, over the top of this ridge. It is going to be a messy, messy finish as Luminosity start picking up some kills. Liquid getting wiped out there. Phase go down outside the play zone as well. Noble on this prime territory taking pot shots, free shots effectively on Evil Genius as they try and flank around. This is exactly what Noble wants. They had such a good performance at Gamescom. Oh, Grenades name. going out. Daculus is going to hit the Kobe and oh, yes he does! Oh, on the nose. Ghoul the only man standing. Ghoul just off the side taking shots. Ghoul trying to turn him but it's Noble that pick themselves up the triple kill. Now the next circle comes in and it is completely open. It is hay bale territory for everybody as they have to move into this circle. Oh, it's time to see some sneaky, sneaky snakes. But look down in that southeastern corner. There are so many squads that are stacked up across each other. Noble's going to have to move from their high ground position, come down and get down dirty with everybody else. Luminosity is trying to push back and get some level of cover. I want to talk about championship moments right now. Triple A still have three members alive, but they are under fire. Noble doing them some favors there and taking down members. Triple A have to get moving, but they've got to push right into digital chaos. Tempo Storm themselves still have Maluke available. He's still oh. alive around the side. They see digital chaos who four members alive. They are the only people that really have circle control right now as everybody has to push their way. 18 people alive in three seconds. Everybody is just trying to have to retreat back to this Really, really wide open hay bailed area. They're trying to run back. You can see that Noble does again have a nice line of sight onto Luminosity. Well, you can see Triple Eight. They're coming out. The blue on them. They have to get moving. 
Digital Cares pushing forward. There's the shot. Shadow downs Fausto. Fausto picked off. Monkey goes down outside the play zone. L Luminosity, we should talk about them. They still have four members alive pushing again, but Noble, who are in the zone right now, have prime position once again as Digital Chaos have shots. That's AAA. They are way outside. They're going to die in the blue, I feel. And Noble looking like the ones to take this. The circle's gone towards Luminosity. Luminosity are in prime position now as the circle moves once again. And with this, that's going to be a nice favor coming out for Luminosity. They have a good amount of control around here. You can see that they're playing in multiple pieces of terrain, separated out, trying to make sure they control every single sight line so that way nobody can sneak up on top of them. Noble's trying to figure out how they're going to push back through. Digital Chaos has found Luminosity. They're going to do a nice push on the side of this terrain. Oh, Chipsy. He's going to have to be very, very careful about how he starts speaking this. Tempo Storm down in what, fifth place? You can see Austin still in there for Ghost Game and keeping him, his team alive effectively in the points. But Digital Chaos and Luminosity are going to start facing each other. Noble off in the distance. They can play real spoilers for this one as Digital Chaos push up over the reaches, but they're running headlong into the Luminosity game. And JP2, we saw him with no iron sights, taking that first shot with the SKS. He's got sights now and he's starting to land them. But Noble, look at the kills they just got. They knocked Ninja, they took Ninja out, they got Chipsy down. And this is all going Noble's way once again, but they have to move. 25 seconds, the blue is on them. Digital Chaos has got a nice amount of control over here. They just have to come up and clean up these guys for Luminosity Gaming so that way they don't feed any information to the last remaining person. There's 10 people up and alive. Instantly drops down to seven. 10 seconds before the circle starts closing in. This is going to be really interesting to see how each one of these squads pair off across these hay bales. Digital Chaos, one game number one, and they're in a great position right now. If they stay just behind this defilade, they're picking shots off. But Noble continuing to land shot after shot. I should mention Austin from Ghost. He is still alive and creeping his way in. While these two teams with three members alive engage each other, he is off in the distance. He has a hay bale for cover as well as he creeps his way forward. Oh. So Ghost still have the chance as Noble push in. Digital Chaos get knocked. Oh, Austin manages to find the shot onto Fausto. He could play real spoiler here just behind that hay bale. Digital oh. Chaos with just one man alive. Austin goes down. Noble now in a great position with Boom. It is Avian and Fausto, the last two standing for Digital Chaos. If they can get a man up and Avian's up. You can tell that Interrogate knows exactly where they are. They're playing back, right back behind that hay bale, trying to look back up. Jock is trying to figure out exactly Ooh, how they made that approach over there. You can see that Chosen Zygote's trying to crawl forward and feed information. Jockey's there as he has to take the shot. We can see just off to the left. Interrogate is there. Can't land the shots on Jockey's. Avian manages to down the Chosen Goat. He's been picked off. Noble goes down as well. Digital Chaos now in a prime position. Neither team in the circle but they do not care. They know where Interrogate is. Boom is down just ahead of him. It's a 1v1 almost as these two guys try and trade off. We can see almost everybody is down. Jockeys and Avian, the only two standing. Boom goes down. That oh. is it. Digital Chaos will take it. The only team so far in Oakland to take two chicken dinners and has that top of the table. Well, with first place in 12 kills, that was an absolutely stellar performance, but you can't count out Noble. Look at this. They net 15 kills inside of that. Coming in second place, they were really struggling in the leaderboards. It's really nice to see them come out, make a strong performance. Additionally, Ghost Gaming coming in third, Luminosity Gaming coming in fourth, and Tempo Storm still with that consistent performance coming in fifth place. Eight kills for Interrogate in second place. That's not bad, but a decent spread, as you mentioned. What, overall, 12 kills for Digital Chaos and first place. That's 420 points going their way. Absolutely will bolt them forward. AAA, of course, who were sitting in first place, ended up getting a sixth place finish and zero kills, which, in, which will absolutely drop them down a little bit. Digital Chaos looking very, very good as we move into the final game, man. One more, and I have to say that in that game right there, you have, if you're a Ghost Gaming fan, you have to really give some respect to Austin, who managed to be so sneaky coming inside that, securing a third place. He was crawling through and actually stepped up and went aggressive at the very last second. Well, ladies and gentlemen, Digital Chaos, we've heard from them once. Let's hear from them again. It's Fausto with Rich Sims. Thank you very much, D-Man. Second chicken dinner. Yes. In two days. How are you feeling right now? I am way beyond stoked. Like, we've had so many rough games after the first win, and now we're just, we're like, we're so frustrated, and we, after the, the last game before this one, we're like, we're talking and just saying that, okay, we just need to let everything go, and just, we're going to go out with a bang, and 
this is what we're doing, guys. We're going out with a bang. I, I don't think that's a bang, to be honest with you. I think that's a, a banging good time because you guys are absolutely smashing it right now. Yeah. Coming into this, you had to go through the open qualifiers. You were originally, we saw you on PogChamp, and then you came through, you got picked up. I was speaking to you and yesterday. What was it like going through those, you know, through the qualifiers and having to go through teams to make it to here? I mean, it was super stressful. Uh, we were, like, there were so many good players we were playing against, and there were so many good teams that didn't make it here. Um, but like, we're just so happy that we we actually qualified to get here, and the feeling of just actually being being able to go to a place like this is insane. And now, I think it's fair to say, obviously, you guys have put this team together. Not so much in terms of when we're looking social media-wise and big names and things like that, compared to some of the other players. But you are proving now that practice makes perfect. I'm assuming you guys are now at the top of the leaderboard. For anybody out there who's kind of had you guys back and you've been supporting you all the way through, what you got to say to them? I mean, thanks for all the support. Like, it's insane when we're watching the Twitch chat. Like, we went back yesterday and we watched the Twitch chat and we just saw all the puck champs in the chat. That was just, that was a great feeling. Um, I'm not sure we're going to be on top of the little boards, though. I think we're going to be up there. We need to, like, we're going to win the next game as well, so. Oh, confident? Yeah, I'm, I'm confident. No. I think we got it now. All right, then. Well, you know what? Best of luck. Congratulations. Guys, give it up for Digital Chaos. Second win of the weekend. That's it now. We've only got one more map left. And as he mentioned, it's still anybody's game. Stay with us, because coming up after the break, we'll do the post-match interview, but we'll also be going into this final game. See you in a second. Amazing. That was wrong. Amazing. Holy shit. Did you see how I got stuck under the car? Yeah, I did. I, I noticed that. I wondered which player it was, but I didn't see who it was. It kind of helped me a lot. I'm just gonna shoot that car. I'm just gonna shoot that car and I got out. It's just, 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 it's